So across the past five years, the number of migrants and asylum seekers crossing the channel on small boats has now exceeded 100,000. In the past seven days, that number is over 1,000 alone. And today was a reminder of the sheer dangers that they face. Now, we have some pictures of the aftermath of the incident that took place. Now, as you said, six have died so far, and that number could have been higher had the authorities not arrived when they did. This is what one member of the rescue team said today. The boat struggled to spread the current. There were 45 to 50 people on board, I believe. We stayed next to them for one or two hours, maybe more. At one point, there were people who wanted to get off. At first, there were only 10, but in the end, we recovered 22 people. Well, so much for the French over there. What about the Home Office over here? So today, the Home Secretary publicly expressed these words in the form of a tweet. She said, My thoughts and prayers are with those affected by the tragic loss of life in the Channel today. This morning, I spoke with our Border Force teams who have been supporting the French authorities in response to this incident. Yet despite those words, our government and the Home Secretary has faced criticism for those who believe that they have not opened up safer routes for those crossing the channel. This is what one campaigner told us today. These deaths should be a wake-up call for the government. They, it should make the government rethink to adopt a different approach, that instead of slamming our door in the face of those that have lost everything, it welcomes people, shows compassion and provides far more safe routes for people to come to the UK and have their asylum claim heard. Which leaves you, like many other journalists, trying to get some answers from the Home Office. What have we been asking them? So I've been asking them particularly about the Bibby Stockholm, you know, and I've been asking them to face some serious questions. What we really want to know at the moment is when did they first test the barge that discovered the Legionella that led to it being evacuated? When did they get the results? And most importantly, why did they wait? Why did they not wait for the results before they onboarded the asylum seekers who now have since been removed from that boat, now that, from that barge? So these are questions that we have put to the Home Office, but at present, we are still waiting a comprehensive answer. Awaiting answers. Simeon Brown, thanks very much indeed for that update. We did, of course, ask for an interview with the Home Office, but we're told nobody was available. Before I came on air, I spoke to the Shadow Immigration Minister, Stephen Kinnock, who has accused the government of not getting a grip on its immigration policy. So I asked him what a Labour government would do. I think it's absolutely clear that the Conservatives have completely lost control of the asylum system. We have 173,000 people in the backlog. They've completely failed to get a returns deal with the European Union, and they're failing to crack down on the people smuggler gangs. True, but it wasn't what I asked. I asked what a Labour government would do. Yeah, so we have a very clear plan, which is to scrap the unworkable, unaffordable and unethical Rwanda plan and use that money to fund the National Crime Agency properly so they can work more effectively with Europol and Interpol. We would clear the backlog by upgrading the seniority of the caseworkers and decision makers uh, in the Home Office and by triaging. So you have high grant rate countries and low grant rate countries being processed uh, much more quickly. And we would get that crucial returns deal with the European Union so that every person who tries to cross on a small boat will be sent back to mainland Europe. But right. we're very realistic. We know you only get a deal like that if you do your bit. So the we French aren't going to go anywhere near that. Controlled pathway. Well, as I was saying, we have to do our bit. So the, the quid pro quo is that we take uh, a controlled, safe and legal pathways for people who are applying to come to the UK. In return for that, the European Union agrees to take back anybody that tries to cross on a small boat, take them back to mainland Europe. We but, know but, that but to do why, a deal with the European Union... Why would they, Union, Mr. Kinnock? Why would they? We've kissed the European goodbye. We're in Brexit now. It's absolutely in the, the interest of France to get rid of these people, get shot of them. There's nothing in it for them. Well, it's certainly not in President Macron's interest to have thousands and thousands of people massing on the coast of Calais. This is a collective issue, a collective European issue that requires a collective European response. Now, the difference between Labour and the Conservatives is we command respect across Europe and Keir Starmer as Prime Minister would be able to negotiate that deal. The triage point you make, what you're saying is effectively sending a message to 
I don't know, places like Afghanistan to Kabul saying, OK, you, we understand there's a, a, a chance that some of your people need asylum, but Albania, India, no way. Is that what you're saying? Because that message could have been sent long ago and isn't getting through. The reality is that there are five or six countries that have very high approval rates, such as Syria, uh, Afghanistan, etc. And then there are a number of countries such as India, which have very, very low approval rates. So it's clear that you could clear a lot of the backlog more quickly by doing the high grant rate and low grant rate countries much more rapidly. And then by upgrading the seniority of the caseworkers and decision makers, because the Tories back in 2013 crazily decided to downgrade that job. Uh, as a result, you had lower productivity and poorer decisions being made more exposed to appeals, which further clogged up the system. OK, coming ashore, we now have the situation where they were marched on board the other day, they're marched off. Looks like something of a fiasco, but Labour would keep that barge, wouldn't you? We're going to have to deal with the mess that we inherit. We, want, we are very clear that there shouldn't be a single person on a barge or in a hotel or in a but military you would keep base. That, no, I'm sorry, no, you no. would keep that barge as things stand. You're not junking the idea, are you? None of these inappropriate, extortionately expensive places are appropriate places for asylum seekers to be. But we don't have a magic wand. We can't fix things on day one. We will have to inherit the mess we inherit and sort it out as rapidly as is humanly possible. Stephen Kinnock, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you very much.